He's known for speaking his mind on Twitter and translating climate change into real terms for Vox. Dave Roberts joins me for lunch at Lupo Verde Osteria. I'm Monica Trousey. This is Off the Menu. Let's say we fast forwarded uh, to the future and everyone listened to the IPCC and we did what we were supposed to do to um, to solve climate change and, and stay below the 1.5 degrees Celsius um, rise. Um, how did we get there? It's a keyhole. <laughs> a lot of things would have to fall into place and go just right to get anything of the scale we need, right? I mean, there's obviously fallback positions. There's stuff the president can do through executive action without Congress, but but in terms of action on the scale that I think the IPCC talks about, or that everybody now sort of, not everybody, most people agree we now need, it's really a long shot. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know the right answer to how to get there really. But. You have two um, teenagers. I wonder how much of the life that they might be living, uh, you know, in 20 years when our climate is different, how much that impacts what you're doing now and, and whether that, you know, really drives you in your current work. I'm kind of a little bit like everybody else. Like it's hard for me to fit in my head what I know about climate with my kids and what I think about their future and what, it, you know, when I think about their future, it's hard for me to sort of integrate what I know about climate into it. It's just very, it's psychologically challenging. I have that same same problem everybody else has, has yeah. with that. Like I spend a lot of time just not thinking about it, just like everybody else, just to stay sane. And if I'm being, you know, totally frank, my, I have two healthy, you know, sort of professional class, white male kids, like they're gonna be the last ones to suffer, right? Yeah. Like lots and lots of people yeah, are exactly. gonna suffer a lot worse before they do. You're a respected voice in the climate and energy conversation. I mean, really, you have everyone from government officials to other journalists who follow you. How do you view your role in the climate and energy conversation? That I have been, I think, somewhat delivered about from the beginning. Goal has always been to bridge, to be a bridge, to sort of establish credibility among real climate people, the climate wonks and the, and, the, and the activists and operators, you know, the people who have devoted their lives to that. But then also, and this is part of what Twitter is good for, also reach and communicate and establish relationships with and credibility with the sort of political writer class, the general sort of like politics, politics writers and politics journalists. So what do you view um the role of nuclear as, and kind of how do you how do you see the industry where it is right now, and um, what do you see for the future of the nuclear industry? We shouldn't be arguing over how to divvy up our ridiculously tiny energy R and D budget in the U.S. We should be expanding it, you know, fivefold, and and aggressively pursuing everything that might help. And certainly, if small, modular, meltdown proof, right, all that, if, if those things come along, they'll be incredibly helpful. I'm sort of skeptical whether we're gonna see those in time to help substantially before 2030 or 2040, maybe 2050, depending on how aggressively they get researched and pursued, but it's not like climate change is going to stop at 2050, right? We're still right. going to need all lots more energy and lots more options. So, so there's existing plants. Pretty easy question to me. R and D on new technologies seems like a pretty easy answer to me. The real difficulty is: should we be supporting building more of? existing established reactors. In that, um, I think there are good faith disagreements to be had. Well, this has been a fascinating discussion. And I know you're gonna head back to the West Coast and you have a, uh, a new driver at home. 
<laughs> I mean, the, the aspect of climate that's about getting out of cars, <laughs> reducing vehicle miles traveled, yeah. den density and urban form and all that, I was already very into that, but now that I have a kid <laughs> who can drive, I'm really rededicating myself to that area of, of policy.